Greetings, everybody, and welcome to Madrid Ball. I hope you all are doing good. Real Madrid have secured another three points. Our title defense has picked up pace, and it does look like it is going to go right down to the wire. In this video, we will be dissecting the performance of Real Madrid against Celta Vigo. We will break down the performance of our players, so let's get started. Let's start by having a look at the lineup. There was Coutinho as usual. We reverted to the back four of Mendy, Nacho, Varane, and Vasquez. Sedan went for the midfield. Field four of Valverde, Modric, Cruz, and Casemiro. And up front, for the third time in a row, we had Benzema and Vinicius. Before we go into the discussion on the lineup, let's do the customary shout out. Only one of you got your prediction correct, and Mr. Mitton Martin, with his futuristic comments, takes away the prize. Good work there, Mr. Martin. And now, if we talk about the lineup, this was one of the rare occasions where we saw all Modric, Cruz, Casemiro, and Valverde in the midfield. Before the match, many of us were speculating about which formation we were going to play. The 4 4 2 midfield diamond was speculated by many, but we didn't know how Modric and Valverde were going to line up alongside each other. As the match progressed, we did see Fede Valverde was playing on the extreme right of the midfield. Sometimes he was also coming inside and many times in the match, he was occupying spaces on the wings as well. I do remember there was an instance where he had to go on a superb sprint on the right flank. He had made a flamboyant run and this man is such a sprinter. With those long legs, he literally runs like a horse. Anyways, the role of Valverde was different from the role that he's more comfortable in. We saw him and Vasquez continuously communicating on the right. Have a look at this picture here. There were quite a few times when Vasquez used to be very advanced on the right and here you can see he was even there in the penalty box waiting for the cross. So Valverde had the defensive duties there and he did a good job covering up for Vasquez. The two had a good thing going on in the match but I do think Valverde got even more involved after Cruz was taken off. Modric shifted to the position of Cruz and then Valverde was playing like a central midfielder and that is the role that Valverde really thrives in. And I also thought that the midfield had a nice balance. There was the ball playing quality of Modric and Cruz and there was the physicality of Valverde and Casemiro. And can this be an approach that we may see in the future as well? Zidane after the Champions League draw had come out to speak about the physical nature of Liverpool. So is this four midfield approach one for the near future? Is Zidane using this keeping Liverpool in mind? We have to wait and see. Moving on if we talk about the first half I thought Real Madrid had a very right start. It almost looked like Real Madrid had carried the same momentum from the Atalanta game. They were energetic, they were pressing very high and we can see that Celta had negligible impact on the game in the first 30 minutes. Celta were trying to pass the ball around in their own half, they were trying to play from the back but Real Madrid were fast, they were quick to react, they showed desire to win back the ball as soon as possible and Celta were bound to crumble under so much pressure. The second goal that we scored was a direct result of the intense pressing. Tony Cruz won the ball with a perfectly time tackle. Benzema there, he takes the ball and fires it into the back of the net. The first goal as well was very well taken by Benzema. He equaled the record of Santillana becoming the fourth highest goal scorer in the history of the club. He's only behind Cristiano, Raul and Alfredo Di Stefano who has 216 goals. So this is one of the targets that Benzema has for the upcoming season. Raul's record of 228 goals can also be conquered by Benzema but the Cristiano record of 312 goals. I do think conquering that would be a bit far-fetched. But hopefully our hitman will continue his rich vein of form in the future and if we talk about Tony Cruz it was another regular performance from him. He is our Mr. Consistent and if we have a look at his stats he had two assists, made three key passes, had 94% passing accuracy and the way he had set up the first goal for Benzema was sheer brilliance. He showed his dribbling ability there and it was a good all-rounded performance by Cruz. But after Real Madrid got the second goal the game took a turn, Celta scored the first and from that point we did see a little drop in intensity. Celta Vigo were passengers for most of the first half but after the goal they decided to show some fight of their own and Celta were the side in the ascendancy as the first half came to a close. Coming to the second half I did think it was a very dull half of football. It's not just because Real Madrid took their foot off the gas but because it was such a stop start half. It was like every minute we were seeing a foul being committed and the game became much more physical. Some very unnecessary challenges were being committed and the game completely lacked fluidity. The refereeing decisions also made a scratch your head. There was the instance where Valverde was wrongly muscled off the pitch where he was making a counter-attacking run on the touchline but the referee found that to be absolutely legitimate. Modric also got an unnecessary yellow card when the referee gave a foul near the penalty box of Madrid and had that free kick from Iago Aspas gone in, we all would have been fuming at the decision making of the referee. The referee, Mario Malero Lopez, does have a history with Real Madrid. We do remember his heroics in the VAR team when he played Real Sociedad in 2019 
and again yesterday, he didn't really win over the Madridistas. Anyways, I have to say that the second half lacked conviction. Celta did threaten a few times, Vinicius as well went on some good runs here and there, but I felt he undid a lot of the good work he had done in the Atalanta game. There were some good moments, but again his biggest flaw was on display. The final ball problem was quite evident, and there was an instance where Vasquez had gone down to his knees while expecting a cross from Vinicius. So definitely that is an area that he has to focus upon. I would like him to continue working on a shooting, maybe dedicate an extra hour or two just doing that during the international break, because Benzema, he will be needing help against Liverpool. Expecting a one-man show in every game from Benzema in front of goal isn't a very wise part to take. There will be games where Benzema's shooting will be off, and that time, the others will have to rise to the occasion. But if we continue talking about the second half, Zidane made only one substitution, and I was a bit surprised about why he didn't choose to make any more changes. The players were looking tired, we had some good options on the bench, but maybe he didn't want to change the dynamics of the game. Real Madrid at times were looking to see out the game without being adventurous. They didn't want end-to-end -end stuff towards the latter stages. So that may possibly be one of the reasons why Zidane was hesitant to make changes. And as for the substitute we had, Marco Asensio came off the bench and he did manage to get on the score sheet. Benzema provided the assist and Asensio has scored back-to-back -back goals for the first time since 2017. So this is one good sign for us and I am also starting to lean towards the idea that he can be more of a super sub for Madrid. Obviously, we won't be jumping to any conclusions here. We need more time to ascertain that, but he did a good job coming off the bench. He showed some ambitious runs. He was taking on the Celta defenders more often, and I do think that against tired legs, Asensio does have the potential to do more damage. The stats of Asensio this season also say a story. Asensio has just two goals and one assist from 1,370 minutes, and on the other hand, as a substitute, he has two goals and one assist in 287 minutes. So is he better off being a sub? The stats certainly reveal that. But definitely, if he keeps scoring regularly and if he continues to be more impactful, surely he can have a very strong end to the season. So those were the only significant action of the second half. We didn't really have much there. Celta to an extent did have the upper hand, but maybe the players of Real Madrid were a bit tired. This was the third game in seven days and most of the players in the starting 11 have been playing regularly. So we may cut them some slack and Real Madrid did a good job by not allowing Celta to have many open shots at goal. Our defending was decent, Casemiro showed his importance in the side, the tenacity that he brought and his role in deflecting the free kick of Aspas was very important and Nacho as usual was solid filling in for Ramos. Varane was alright but he was also one of the culprits who let Santi Mina free inside the box for the goal and Mendy, we do expect more from Mendy in the attacking sense. So overall it was a nice victory, we got the job done for the month of March and now the players will be joining their respective national teams and one of the players who will be joining Spain during during the international break is Sergio Ramos. Zidane yesterday informed the press that Ramos would be playing for the national team and he also went on to insist that minutes with the national team would be good for Ramos. So now we can completely dismiss the notion that Sergio Ramos has picked up another injury. It was just a minor knock and Real Madrid took a precautionary approach. Moving on, let's hear what Zidane had to say in his post-match press conference. Assessing the performance of Real Madrid, Zidane said, Football has become more and more difficult, but I'm pleased with our performance. We were up against it in the second half, but we managed to control the game well. We found it tough against a good opposition, but I feel we deserve to win. He further said, We have to keep doing what we are doing. We have a lot of games recently. Now we are entering the final stretch where everything is at stake, and we are pleased with the way the team is playing, the physical conditions, and how we are defending. Zidane was then questioned about the tight schedule and the fatigue impacting the players. Some players will be going on international duty. On that, Zidane responded, We know the schedule and that we have many matches. The players are good right now and we have to make the most out of this. Some are going with the countries and that's not ideal for me as a Real Madrid coach, but it is what it is. For now, we just have to enjoy what we did in this game. Lastly, Zidane was asked why Benzema doesn't get called to the French national team. He said, I don't understand it, you don't understand it, and neither do many others. For me as a Real Madrid manager, I prefer that he stays with us. What he did today with his teammate was spectacular and I'm really pleased for him because he works hard and has the desire for 
more, more, just like the whole team does. We went for it from the first minute and we deserve the victory. So those are the thoughts of Zinedine Zidane and now we are going to witness a boring phase in the upcoming days. We won't have club football but I will try to upload a few videos. There may be some of our players giving some random interviews so I will be discussing their thoughts here on the channel and hopefully some interesting things will come up during this time frame. And that is all I have in this video. Before leaving, do let me know how you felt about the performance of Real Madrid against Celta. Which player impressed you the most? Let me know in the comments below. I will see you soon. Till then, take care. Glory to Madrid. And as always, a la Madrid.